The Birmingham Phoenix women got off to a sensational start in 2021 before petering out, rather, and eventually losing in the semi-finals to the eventual champions, the Oval Invincibles. However, they've added international superstars in Sophie Devine, Elise Perry and Deepti Sharma. Can that make all the difference? Check our squad preview next. Welcome to the 100 Club. My name is Tom and I'm joined again by Rich for the penultimate women's squad preview ahead of the competition that is the 100 in 2022. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. It's great to see you. If you like what we do, hit the subscribe button and you'll find plenty more stuff on our channel. Uh, and if you like what we do, then hit the like button. That's what it's there for. Rich, Birmingham Phoenix in 2022. What do you make of them? Well, looking back on 21, as you said in the introduction, it was such a strong start, but then they really petered out. I think they finished yeah. with a 4-4 a four and four record in the, in the competition, uh, sort of round robin bit, then were pretty soundly beaten by the Oval Invincibles in the Eliminator. Um, but it's all changed, really. They've got rid of their three overseas players from last year, who were Shafali Verma, Erin Burns and Katie Pack. And as you say, they brought in Dipti Sharma from the Spirit uh, last season. And then, of course, uh, Sophie Devine and Elise Perry. Uh, Elise Perry is being sort of the one of the sort of global stars of women's cricket, um, although struggled with injury later. And so it'll be interesting to see uh, how she goes in the competition. Quite. Well, you've nearly done a whole squad's worth of breathing. I have. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get it something up on screen, at least, uh, if you're watching Indeed. on on the YouTube. So let's, uh, let's start at the top, really. And... Um, there are there are some odd things going on with this squad. Firstly, that you know, one of the questions that I think people are going to want to ask is why didn't they bring back Shafali Verma to to be one of those opening batters? I'm not sure. I mean, she didn't have a fantastic tournament last time round, but she had a decent tournament, um, and it, it, they didn't obviously replace her with a kind of a like for like power mm. opener. Um, Sophie Devine obviously comes in hugely experienced cricketer, comes off the back of a good Commonwealth Games, but is a sort of a slight different type of batter. But um, they've obviously made their decisions in the recruitment department, and uh, this is the way they've decided to go. Eve Jones to open again. Uh, she was good last year as well. Uh, on the back of that, got herself a, a, a women's big bash contract, um, and she'll be looking to sort of replicate that form this time around in the, uh, in the second edition of the 100. Yeah, I mean, Eve Jones has done very well for the Sparks recently as well. Yeah. Sophie Devine, I suppose, is, as you say, a very different prospect to Shafali Verma, uh, and not least because she's obviously an all-rounder with, you know, 98 wickets in the book uh, at international level and two and a half thousand runs. So, yeah, doing something different. But, you know, you could have asked the question about that. But Sophie Devine, um, as you say, one of the top paid players in the in the game uh, in the tournament. So we'll hope to see something there. And then you've already mentioned the name that comes in at three, Elise Perry. Uh, one of, the, one of the superstars of the game, clearly an important part of the Australia squad. Uh, do you think she'll be fit to go for the tournament? Well, what I've been reading is that she'll probably play as a specialist batter. Uh, okay. She's been dealing with a stress fracture in her back, I think, over the last few months. She hasn't played a lot of cricket recently. Um, so she she won't be bowling through the tournament. Uh, that's at least my expectation. So she'll be, she'll be batting in the top three and then obviously <laughs> trying to look after herself in the field while, while nursing this, uh, this injury that stops her from bowling. Yeah, well, you don't want a back injury if you're bowling sort of medium fast like she does. Um, that's a bit of a loss, I suspect, on where they wanted her to be at the beginning when they, you know, obviously when they've signed her. But I think she'll still bring a, a plenty to the tournament and, and is a great option at three, of course. Yeah, and she's she's obviously trying to force herself back into the Australian T20 format. I mean, it's very difficult at the time, at the moment, mm -hmm. because it's such a strong team. But obviously, tournaments like the 100 give her, you know, the platform on which to show that she's still good enough. I mean, there have been some question marks, uh, you know, about her strike rate in T20s. Mm. So yeah, she can she can uh, answer the critics in the in the next few weeks. Okay, following up in the middle order, then you've got a couple of uh, uh, England's uh, better players, I would say, in uh, recent times, in Georgia Elwes and in Amy Jones. Uh, Georgia Elwes, uh, an all format player for England, you know, a very solid, consistent option, I would say. Uh, Amy yeah. Jones, um, you know, top contracted player again and um, right-handed batter, but who will also keep for this team, but perhaps lacking a little form, not a great series against South Africa. No. Um, so she, again, another player looking for this tournament in order to sort of answer some of those critics. I wonder whether she'll bat higher than Elvis in this order. As you mentioned, Is that me? Elvis, Am I being a critic? 
<laughs> you are being well. No, it's it's a f- fair criticism. Um, yeah. George Elwes has obviously had a very good summer for the Central Sparks yeah. as well. Uh, some big runs for for them in the uh, in the Hayhoe Flint and the um, Charles Edwards Trophy. So uh, it's it's a decent uh, middle order. And uh, and just talking about sort of the Central Sparks, Izzy Wong has been batting up the order for them as well. Yeah. Uh, obviously, sort of a. A rising star of women's cricket. She's burst into the England team in the last few months, but uh, mostly known for her bowling. But of course, in in a T Twenty format, she can you know give it a whack as well. So she'll see herself very much as a as an all rounder, I think, uh, in this edition of Hundred. Yeah, you've and this is your lineup on the screen right now. You've got her coming in at six. That's as slightly higher than I would have put her. But as you say, she burst onto the scene really with this tournament last year uh, with the self professed. Uh, aim of becoming the fastest bowler in, in, in the game. Uh, and I'd expect she'll take a number of wickets again this year. Indeed. Um, you then got Gwen Davis come in, which I think is a little surprising, not in any form at all, really. Um, but, you know, mostly in, uh, you know, perhaps as a specialist keeper batter, maybe at that point, before then getting into the bat- the bowling lineup. Yeah, I suppose it'd be Stara Callis would probably, the, uh, the Dutch batter, would be putting pressure on that. It was sort of thinking about the balance of the side a little bit, but... Uh... You know, sort of went with incumbency because she was she was in the side last year. Yeah. Um, the way I have it on the screen there with Dipti Sharma coming in after her again, probably Dipti Sharma coming in will come in like a spot higher. I think of Dipti Sharma more as a bowling all rounder uh, mm. and you know, doesn't score that fast. I mean, she's no slouch, but she's not sort of an absolute power hitter as well. So I could I could see her batting a bit lower. Of course, I think she batted five or six for the Spirit last year. So. Um, yeah, that's often been the criticism of of, of Dipti Sharma is is perhaps a little power in the in the batting game, but you know, I think that's a tremendous pickup for them because I didn't really understand the fourth overseas pick, which was uh, Sophie Molyneux. You know, they're giving a twenty five thousand pound contract, a left handed spinner, but it's not really played. I think since November last year, so I don't know how much we're going to see of her. Yeah, you'd have thought. Uh, what well, maybe it comes down to at least Perry's fitness. Uh, they felt they needed the co- the cover. Uh, as you say, she's not been involved an awful lot in Australia recently. It's the national team recently uh, is very experienced, so you know we'll do a job if she comes into the team. But you have some good op- spin options already in the squad in Kirsty Gordon and after her Maxud, who was sort of very impressive uh, in the tournament last year. And of course, Emily Arlett uh, will probably bat ahead of them. Uh, impressive fast bowler. She was being talked off as. Uh, getting into, you know, putting pressure on the England squad this time last year. Just dropped a little bit in the pecking order behind the likes of Izzy Wong and, and Lauren Bell and uh, you know, Freya Kemp. But, um, you know, she'll be looking to, you know, again, use this to sort of a furnish, a further burnish her, her England credentials. Yeah, and Max, who's the name to watch there for me, a leg break bowler. They've been taking a lot of wickets in domestic cricket this year, and I, I'd, I'd expect that to continue. I expect to take a hatful in the tournament. But there are some interesting other names there which they could try out, and none perhaps more interesting uh, than Davina Perrin, who is the ripe age of 15 years old. I know. And is having some a cracking, well, first season, really. Um, you know, picked up a £10,000 contract. And the right-handed batter could stand a chance of getting into this lineup. Yeah, nice work if you can get it at 15 years <laughs> old. It's more, more than my paper round paid or whatever it was when I was doing yeah. when I was 15. Um, yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? If you're if you're good enough, you're old enough. Uh, she will be the youngest player in the tournament if she uh, to to play. I mean, she's already the youngest player in the tournament, but it'd be fascinating mm. to see uh, how well she goes if she if she gets in. You know, quite a few talented teenagers, and of course, uh, we had Alice Capsey who. Burst onto the scene last year at the age. I think she was what she was sixteen during the tournament last year. Was yeah, she just turned yeah. seventeen? Yeah, again, very young, but ended up being one of the players of the tournament. So no reason why Davina Perrin can't do it uh, this time round. Definitely a name to keep your eye on for the future. So looking forward to seeing some of that. So the big question overall, as always, Rich, is how are the Birmingham Phoenix going to get on this year? Well, I think they will probably be in a similar boat to last year it feels quite similar in size wise you know they've they've got rid of you know the two australians um burns and, and mac two batters mm. they brought in two antipodean batters in a uh, perry and uh, divine of course uh, divine will do a bit more bowling yep. that's an upgrade there um dipti sharma is obviously one of the best uh, 
off spinners in women's cricket. So that's an upgrade there. Have they upgraded as much as others? Uh, that's the question, I think. So for me, looking similar to next year, I don't see them at the bottom of the pile, but I don't see them challenging for the trophy either. Okay, well, I'm sticking my neck on the line. I think that's a semi-final team again this year. So I think top three in the groups, uh, I expect to see that uh, team progress towards the final stages, but perhaps just not to the final again, like last I, year. I think there are three better teams in, in the mix. Okay, well, we'll see how that goes here, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> you said the London Spirit would be the worst team in the men's competition. Let's see how that's going for you. Well, oh. give us time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. You're doing all right. You're lucky you. Better than my Welsh part. Enough for the men's competition. We have one more women's squad preview to come. But in the meantime, if you've uh, disagreed with anything we've said there in the Birmingham Phoenix preview, let us know down below in the comments. And we'd be delighted to hear what you have to say about uh, their chances in 2022. Rich, catch you next time. Cheers.